on art therapy and its remar remarkable impacts. So um, I am a junior from James Logan High School and some of my extracurriculars involve the strategic debate team, varsity tennis um, since freshman year, and I am the president of Heart to Heal, which is an art therapy initiative um, attempting to spread awareness to art therapy and kind of um, disassemble some of the myths and stigma surrounding it. Um, my career interests combine um, computer science and biomedicine, and some of my passions include um, focusing on AI and healthcare specifically. So starting off with um, kind of talking about what art therapy is and how it has originated, as well as the differences between art therapy and creative arts, because there's a lot of confusion between the exact differences between the day-to-day -day art you see and then the clinical aspect of art therapy. So what is art therapy? It is a therapeutic approach that combines the creative process of making art with psychological techniques, um, and essentially its roots originate from psychology. It has, art therapy has borrowed theoretical knowledge from counseling and psychotherapy disciplines, so its roots stem from psychoanalytic and psychodynamic theory, um, cognitive art therapy, and kind of principles from art or psychologists like Gestalt and Jung. And the unique thing about art therapy is that it relies on the art-based mediums. So what that does is it enables um, an expression of nonverbal um, emotions, which cannot be done through normal psychological treatment with a therapist because many people um, with certain disorders have struggled to voice their um, emotions and struggles. So through art therapy and its advantage of nonverbal communication, they are able to express those emotions through the creative art making process. Um, art therapy includes painting, drawing, um, different kinds of media, sculpture, collage, printmaking, and so many more creative ways um, to establish this therapeutic process. So how did this therapy and uh, profession begin, begin? Art therapy as a profession began in the mid-20th century. Um, it stemmed from English-speaking and European countries. Um, Adrian Hill, um, a British artist, had was recovering from tuberculosis in a sanatorium, and he essentially discovered the impacts of art therapy um, through experiencing himself, and he was the first one to kind of document um, the therapy as a therapeutic practice rather than just an activity that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So he wrote that the value of art therapy lay in um, kind of engrossing the mind and releasing the creative um, energy of it, and he was the one who coined the term art therapy in 1942, as well as established um, many documents, um, such as his book in 1945 called Art Versus Illness. So kind of to dispel um, the stigmas around art therapy, it's not just a common um, practice, it is facilitated um, by a licensed art therapist, um, so not anyone can do it, it is a studied practice, while the creative arts, on the other hand, is kind of the art that you experience, you might have experienced in your daily life. It has the purpose of developing a skill, an artistic skill, rather than um, focusing on the creative process. So in the creative arts, you focus on the finished product, um, such as the artwork or um, anything at the end of the creating making process, but art therapy focuses on the direct making of the art and the process of creating the art, um, and that is valued more rather than in the creative arts. Um, you are encouraged to focus on the progression of artistic skills, so it is obviously more education-based. Um, but art therapy is more of a um, therapy-based, and interestingly enough, it allows for a regression of the artistic skills. So a lot of art therapists encourage their clients to go back to making quote-unquote childish art for the therapeutic benefit because a lot of older clients um, are able to go back and revert to their childish memory or childhood memories um, or youthful imagination and kind of stem that creative process that they might have lacked in their current state. 
So focusing on different case studies and the effects on patients, as well as what an art therapy session might look like. So starting off with the effects on patients, um, physical illness, chronic pain, mental health, um, art therapy can range from affecting clients uh, from a very young age to a very old age, and can range from physical to mental health. Um, the main premise of it is that it helps express fears and anxiety that are difficult to articulate verbally, and um, in specifically cancer treatment and mental health clients, um, essentially art therapy, is art therapy is used to distract them from harmful treatment, or uh, treatment that facilitates kind of negative emotions or might be hard to push through for the client, especially when they're children, um, it kind of impacts them the most. So what does an art therapy session look like? Um, essentially, an art therapy session varies uh, in a variety of ways because the creative uh, ability is entrusted to the art therapist. So based on their doctorate experience and their experience with art in general, um, they establish a unique artistic agenda that they implement. So there aren't really any specific hardcore rules that they must follow, um, but kind of what is taught through the doctorate program and experiences is kind of um, specific ways to focus on the client themselves, rather than specific ways to um, administer the art. Um, but basically, it is divided into three stages. First is the pre-art making process, which sets the therapeutic goals with the patients and kind of helps them garner a sense of control over their situation, which they might feel as though they are helpless in. Um, and it is definitely focused more on themselves and kind of introspection. But the art making process is the next stage, and that's where they have the creative um, administration of their practices, or um, can range from any mediums as, as specified before. It can be an open theme or a specific theme, um, and it can be directive or non-directive. So there's a lot of different ways the agenda can be administered, um, but it's ultimately um, up to the art therapist uh, and their experience, unique experiences to themselves. Next is the post art making um, stage, and this includes open-ended questions and kind of assessing how the client feels post um, the art therapy session. And this is important because this includes journaling and kind of documenting the progress of um, the therapeutic sessions, kind of like how a psychologist would do in normal therapy sessions, except this is through the art analysis and how the client feels. Um, so this picture is a picture of an art, or a veteran, a war veteran, that most likely suffers from PTSD, taking part in an art therapy session. So moving on to case studies, um, this case study and the next are both taken from the uh, National Institute of Health, and they document kind of series of cases where art therapy has been proven to um, alleviate certain symptoms of whatever condition the client faces. So in this case, there is a 12-year-old boy named Tom, and he suffers from autism. And specific symptoms include social interaction, repetitive behaviors, and most importantly, self-regulatory issues. So being unable to con control certain behaviors and can also kind of lead to um, self-inflicting um, behaviors as well, and sensory dysfunction. So what the art therapy, um, so after one year of art therapy intervention, um, this study kind of concluded that it facilitated sensory modulation and self-regulation in Tom. So it was proven to um, lower his anxiety levels, um, aiding attachment to his art therapist, improve his social interactions as well. And he attended art therapy sessions as well as speech therapy sessions. So his speech therapist really um, actually did say that there was a rapid growth of expressiveness and verbal communication that stemmed from art therapy. So art therapy kind of opened up his sense for social engagement and kind of lowered his anxiety levels. This next case study deals with adults and can uh, adu adults with cancer and kind of showcases the rate, age range of ways that art therapy can affect different clients. Um, so in this case, this was a systematic literature review, so it kind of compiled different articles that were um, published on the National Institute of Health. So 
Essentially, they focused on examining the effectiveness of art therapy interventions, specifically the making of art and not like music therapy or just looking at paintings, specifically the creative process of making and engaging with the art and how it improved the quality of life or QOL in adults with cancer. So the articles reported positive effects of art therapy on anxiety, depressive symptoms, and QOL in adults with cancer, facing various um, degrees of treatment as well as various types of treatment. So kind of the open-endedness of art therapy, but also how it follows a specific structure, the kind of dichotomy um, allows for a very creative and impressive way in, way in which it facilitates healing. So number three is the impacts on industry and kind of if how to pursue art therapy as a career, its effects on healthcare and future possibilities of technology. So qualifications to be an art therapist. So um, unsurprisingly, it requires a lot of different steps and degrees in schooling and education to become an art therapist. So it's not something that you can just pick up. Um, you need to be licensed like any other therapist is. So starting off with a master's degree in art therapy, it is required for the um, student to engage in an entry level practice in art therapy, which needs to be approved by the required um, administrations. And a lot of the coursework includes psychopathology, human growth and development, counseling and psychological theories, multicultural and social issues, creative studies, um, history and theory of art therapy, and studio art. So there's a lot of psychology as well as well as actual studio art practices that are needed for an art therapy to uh, art therapist um, to engage in. So that the master's degree is one aspect. The next aspect is 100 hours of supervised practicum plus 600 hours of supervised art therapy internships at a clinic. So they need to get that first-hand experience with working with different clients at a clinic. Um, so about 700 hours plus of schooling is required. And a lot of art, therapies, art therapists don't just stop there. They go on to pursue a postgraduate study, um, which includes a doctorate program or a license or a licensure and credentials administered by the ATCB. So um, below are kind of like the different titles that you can receive um, and licenses that you can receive. And this obviously requires additional years of schooling and postgraduate uh, programs, but um, some local universities here in California that um, provide accredited master's and doctorate programs for art therapy include Dominican University of California and Loyola Marymount University. So the current implications in healthcare obviously um, include reducing costs for reliance on medicines or um, any other like medications that revolve um, therapeutic healing. It supports overall healing and essentially as an alternative form of therapy, it reduces the reliance again on medication and long-term hospitalization uh, of like cancer patients or patients going undergoing severe treatment. So in this survey uh, conducted uh, with uh, numerous cancer patients, um, they kind of uh, asked to indicate which techniques or tools that they found most helpful in their recovery and treatment. Um, so as you can see, art therapy is listed as the fifth highest and most in the most effective treatments um, while incorporating like numerous other techniques. So future possibilities for art therapy. So as um, AI and artificial intelligence and um, different um, virtual reality techniques and other technologies, while they are coming into the spotlight recently, it has been considered to be implement, implemented in art therapy. There is an ongoing kind of um, debate or kind of hesitation more like, um, because art therapists traditionally like to focus on traditional art, uh, art making rather than this kind of tr transition into technology, which again, as digital art and other digital versions of art making has emerged. It has been kind of uh, a hesitation for many, but also um, on the flip side, it is definitely considered to be implemented. So 
So they call this in the art, in, in a, a term that they use for art therapy, they call it new media, which includes virtual reality, digital art, augmented reality, and AI. And formal elements or the utilization of that includes kind of the quantitative aspects um, in a specific artwork that is analyzed. So kind of the ways that it can be implemented, um, virtual reality can provide a kind of um, sensory impact or feedback that they can incorporate through their therapy and can create kind of a realistic simulation of a specific safe space um, that a client has. So interestingly, um, for cancer patients, especially children, they kind of envision an environment where they feel comfort and um, safe in. So virtual reality can even stimulate those conditions under while they undergo uh, harsh treatments such as chemo and other um, intense treatments. So they can immerse themselves directly into their surroundings and can essentially provide some realistic and immersive art therapy experience. So artificial intelligence, on the other hand, is very similar in um, addressing kind of um, patient artwork and just like addressing emotional cues. So algorithms can analyze the data taken from different art mediums and provide tailored recommendations and interventions. And a lot of um, AI can be used in generative AI and um, the developing of assistants or chatbots to assist in like journaling or kind of the post art making stage of art therapy. So kind of the key takeaways um, from this is that art therapy empowers individuals to express their emotions, confront trauma and find solace and hope in artistic expressions and it opens doors to unique innovative and holistic approaches in modern medicine. Those are my references, so uh, thank you. That's all for my presentation. Are there any questions? Okay, if not, yeah, thank you so much.